vaccines, GMOs, climate change. These are issues that evoke a lot of reactions, especially at family gatherings around the holidays. At least, that's what happens in my house. I can recall many a holiday meal where my uncle loudly asserted his views on various issues, and then my dad or my husband or my sister or me would get into it with him. And so it went back and forth, back and forth, while the rest of us ate our holiday meal in awkward and uncomfortable silence. Sound familiar? But in the midst of passionate debates over vaccines and other such issues, there's someone who stays above the fray, a person who lives in the middle and sees a range of views, who's curious and open to new information. This is who I'd like to shed light on. She deserves to be recognized. I'll call her the skeptic. As a science communicator, I'm very much inspired by the skeptics. Broadly defined, skepticism is a practice of informing and educating and building awareness about science-related topics. And a question of particular interest right now is why we as the public disagree on certain issues of science. So why do we disagree on issues like vaccines, GMOs, and climate change? Well, science communicators thought it was because the public just doesn't have enough information about these issues, or at least not enough of the right information. In other words, the more information we have, the less likely we are to disagree. But is that actually the case? Eh, not so much, at least not for those issues of science that tend to be divisive. The science communication community, yes, there is one, has started to recognize that if someone's not open to new information, then no amount of information is going to change their mind, especially for those controversial issues of science that tend to come up over the dinner table. Think about a time that you went to an all-you-can-eat buffet and you literally ate all you could eat. Even if you wanted to, you probably couldn't eat anything else, right? At least not comfortably. Well, it's kind of like that. If we're already full of our own information and our own beliefs, there's not much room for new information. And that's where the skeptic can help us. Science is becoming increasingly politicized. For example, climate change is part of political platforms. And wearing masks? and become a statement about freedom. And our society is highly polarized, with issues of science becoming increasingly contentious. And the divisions among the public and leadership on vital scientific issues like public health, immunizations, opening schools during a pandemic, and environmental issues have fueled misinformation campaigns and policymaking that doesn't quite track with scientific evidence. And it's these kinds of fundamental disagreements that can have real effects on our health and safety. So what do we do about this? How do we have the necessary public discussions to be able to make informed choices? And how do we learn and adapt in a world of rapid change? We need to be open-minded. We need to be open to possibilities beyond what we think we know and what we believe. Unfortunately, that's not necessarily happening right now, at least not broadly. Currently, our public discussions around contentious issues of science tend to frame views as being binary choices. And in our hyper-polarized society, we tend to focus on those opposing views at the extreme. And if you choose one option, you can't logically choose the other. And interestingly, these choices are also wrapped up with political and cultural issues, making it just that much more complicated. For example, vaccines. Individual choice or public health? Masks, personal protection or personal freedom? And alternative medicine, you decide. But when our families go at it over the dinner table at these kinds of issues, what you may have noticed is that the discussions may be oversimplified and probably lack the detail and the nuance that's really necessary to have a thoughtful discussion. And how we form our views on issues is complex. Our views can be shaped by our family and friends, our education, our political views, and even where we get our news. In other words, it's complicated. And because it's complicated, on some issues, we may feel some degree of internal conflict, which can be uncomfortable. So what do we do about this? Do we cling as tightly as we can to our preferences and beliefs? Or 
Is there another way? Now, imagine that you have a skeptic sitting at your table. Let me introduce you to Mark. Mark grew up a rural boy, and the issue of climate change just didn't really come up. But Mark was taught to be critical, to ask questions, and to think for himself. And as an adult, Mark self-identifies as a skeptic. Over several decades working with the military on disaster response efforts, Mark started to notice what he thought was an increase in coastal-related disasters. And this seemed to him unexpected, based on what he thought he knew. So then he started to question. And then he started to research the issue. Because Mark is a skeptic, he leaned into his experiences and sought out new information to help him understand what it was he was seeing. And through this process, he gained new knowledge and new perspective, and eventually his beliefs started to shift. So what comes to mind when you hear someone referred to as a skeptic? Doubter, disbeliever, conspiracy theorist? Actually, the term comes from the Greek noun skepsis, which means examination, inquiry, or consideration. And the ancient skeptics thought of themselves as investigators. Ancient skepticism was a really a way of one's living life through philosophical inquiry and actively questioning one's beliefs. And to the ancient skeptics, when there were two seemingly incompatible theories, but that had equally good arguments on either side, the ancient skeptic always found room for doubt, suspended judgment, and kept searching for the truth. Modern skepticism is embodied by the scientific method. Put very simply, the scientific method is a way of formulating and testing plausible explanations to natural phenomena. And a claim is considered factual when there's enough evidence that most of us can agree on, like that the Earth is round. But in science, all facts are conditional and are subject to challenge. Because the world changes, people, information, knowledge, all keep evolving. And it's skepticism through the scientific method that helps lead to those conditional conclusions. Outside the realm of science, though, the term skeptic is sometimes used with negative connotations. Maybe you've heard people being referred to as climate skeptics or vaccine skeptics when it was perceived that they may misunderstand or mistrust scientific information. In my own experience, one of the challenges with the term skeptic is that it's not always applied consistently. There is a big difference between somebody who self-identifies as a skeptic, like Mark, who's leaning in to that space of questioning, and somebody who's labeled a skeptic by others when maybe the views don't quite jibe with the scientific perspective. Mark's journey also highlights that our public discussions around these issues of science tend to leave a lot of views and a lot of people out. So our public discussions around contentious issues of science, framing them as binary choices is too simplistic. In reality, the world is messy and our views and these issues themselves are really complex. So potentially we could have a range of views on a given issue. So instead of thinking about our views as being binary choices, we can think of them perhaps as being along a continuum. So what does that look like if we think about it visually? Well, we might imagine that our views sit along a spectrum. So let's examine this a little further through an example, shall we? So I'm gonna make a statement and I want you to think about your answer. And don't worry, this is just a statement for our thought exercise. I'm in no way advocating for any particular view. You ready? All right, genetically modified foods are safe to eat. Think about where your views fall along our spectrum. Are they at either end of disagree or agree? Or are they somewhere in between the two endpoints? What we start to realize when we think of our views as being along a continuum is that there's a lot of space in the middle. My own journey to understanding and accepting that I too am a skeptic is kind of like my journey when I climbed Mount Lassen. After finally making it to the top, I was able to see 
views in all directions for miles. To me, that's the value of being a skeptic. It's that we can see the views that we otherwise couldn't see from the ground. So what would the world look like if we were all a little more skeptical? Well, at this moment in history, we're being forced to take a hard look at our systems and institutions and our place in the world. And the skeptics can help us hold a mirror up to society and to ourselves. In our hyperpolarized society, skepticism is an asset. And the skeptics toolbox can help us better understand both the complex problems and solutions that are raised in debates over issues of science. And by considering a range of views, we also can generate new ideas and new possibilities to adapt in a world of rapid change. So these issues don't necessarily come up over every meal, but around the time that our families tend to gather, like the holidays, is when our worldviews might start to collide. So the next time you're gathered around the table, here are a few tips to help you embrace your inner skeptic. First, find room for doubt. Holding beliefs is part of being human. But just because we were taught or told to believe something doesn't necessarily mean it's correct or complete. So what happens when we step back from what we want to be true? Well, stepping back to look at what we believe and why we believe it is the starting point for the skeptic. This is what sets us on a path to learning and growth. Secondly, aim to understand. It's easy to focus on being right, but understanding that's what takes real effort. And this is the role of the skeptic as investigator. Think of how a child approaches the world. They don't come in with a whole lot of knowledge and deeply held beliefs. So just like a child exploring his first acai bowl, get right in there, get your hands dirty and start picking up pieces. And then seek out credible, good quality information to help you understand what it is that you're seeing so that you can continue to investigate delicious questions. And finally, be curious. Engage in discussions with people who hold views that are different from yours, whether it's through real life interactions, getting out of your social media bubble, or reading articles written from a different perspective. Part of embracing our inner skeptic means uncovering our own biases and gaps in knowledge. And being curious can also help us build shared understanding instead of seeing people who disagree with us as being an other. And by focusing on what we have in common instead of what makes us different, we can focus and move towards the middle and help reduce polarization on key issues of science. American astronomer and science writer Carl Sagan sums it up best. The truth may be puzzling. It may take some work to grapple with. It may be counterintuitive. It may contradict deeply held prejudices. It may not be consonant with what we desperately want to be true. But our preferences do not determine what's true. Right now, we're at a critical point in history. We're in the middle of a global pandemic and a global climate crisis, where the data, the views of the public, and decisions by leadership are not consistent with one another. It's up to us as citizens to actively question the status quo so that we can learn from what has happened and move forward. And as part of our efforts to do this, we need to shift our public discussions around these important issues of science, which includes embracing skepticism to support and cultivate critical thinking. So I wanna leave you with a challenge today. I challenge each one of us to be open to new information, to ask the hard questions, and to consider various points of view so that we can start to move our public discussions on important issues of science beyond the binary so that we can create a better, smarter, and less polarized future. Are you in?